Hi friends! Have you wondered which chocolate is the healthiest? It's not what you think. I was a chocolaholic, but ever since I learned that chocolate was tainted with unacceptable levels of lead and cadmium, I quit eating them. I tested my blood for heavy metals and had detectable levels of cadmium. Cadmium can cause osteoporosis or bone loss and levels build up over time. But I really want to eat chocolate because it has healthy, beneficial flavanols. And so I've been on a quest for chocolate with low levels of heavy metals and high levels of flavanols. Unfortunately, you can't trust percent cacao as a marker for flavanols as the industry lumps cocoa liquor, cocoa powder, and cocoa butter together to calculate their percent cacao and they don't all have flavanols. So in this video, I will share with you my research on which brands have the most flavanols and least toxins for you and your kids to eat. And I'll also share with you which brands to avoid when you are buying chocolate bars, chocolate chip, chocolate powders, and chocolate mixes. Now you may think I'm a bit paranoid, but some of your favorite brands like these have unacceptable levels of heavy metals by over 200%. Just so that you understand how to choose your chocolate, let's talk about the different types of chocolate first and how they are related to cocoa powder and the cacao beans and nibs. There are four main types of chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and ruby chocolate. All of them are made out of cocoa solids except for white chocolate, which only has cocoa butter. All chocolate is essentially processed foods with a mixture of sugar, milk, and varying components of other extracted ingredients from coca beans. Cacao and coca beans are referring to the same plant. The Almec, Maya, and Aztec civilizations were likely the first to cultivate cacao trees, Theobroma cacao, which literally means food of the gods and bitter water. The tree is really hard to grow and only thrives between 20 degrees north and south requiring warm temperatures, year-round moisture, and midges for pollination. The original way hot chocolate was consumed was a bitter, sugarless, milkless, spicy beverage. However, Spanish conquistadors, they brought chocolate back to Spain and introduced hot chocolate to King Charles of Spain. He called it brown gold and coca beans were literally used as currency in South America. Now leave it up to the Western palate to add sugar and fat to ruin a perfectly healthy food. Sweet and hot chocolate went from Spain to across Europe and was so addicting that European colonies began to grow it outside of Central America. And that's why today half of the world's chocolate comes from the Ivory Coast and Ghana in Africa. Now milk chocolate, that didn't exist until 1867 when the Swiss chemist Nestle produce milk powder. Now obviously that was a blockbuster hit. Another Swiss gentleman named Lint in 1897 figured out how to make chocolate smooth. That was another blockbuster success. Now these two additions to chocolate makes eating chocolate more pleasurable but less healthy. But the contamination of chocolate with heavy metal started way before adding any sugar or milk. Of all the different chocolates, cocoa powders have the highest cadmium concentrations with some brands around 1 to 1.5 micrograms of cadmium per gram of coca powder, which is five times more than the acceptable level by the World Health Organization, which is at 0.3 micrograms per gram. Now, although all plants and animals have cadmium, chocolate is extremely high, about 10 to 20 times higher than the average plant. We do need to be mindful which chocolates to avoid and practice some simple, easy techniques to reduce our absorption in our foods. Because really, if you don't absorb it, then there isn't a problem. Latin America grown cacao beans are really the worst offenders with Peru leading the pack having 57% of its cacao beans exceeding 0.08 micrograms per gram with levels as high as 1.79 micrograms per gram from northern Peru. Now, have you ever tried Trader Joe's chocolate passport? My son gave that to me about two years ago for Christmas, and unfortunately, I couldn't get myself to eat it because I knew it was contaminated with cadmium, and sadly, I just threw it away. Chocolate grown from West Africa has much less cadmium than those grown from Latin America. But when it comes to chocolate, cadmium is only found in coca solids, and therefore, it is not a problem for those who like white chocolate as there are no coca solids and white chocolate, only coca butter. And by the way, the recommended daily limit of cadmium 
is 4.1 micrograms for adults and 3 micrograms for kids for the total exposure from the air you breathe, the water you drink, and the foods that you eat for the day. In the old days, cadmium was used to make white paint, dental amalgams in the 1900s, and was a substitute for tin during World War II. Today, cadmium is still used in batteries, it's in metal manufacturing, and used in plastics. And if you are a welder or doing metal soldering or work in battery manufacturing, you really should demand that your workplace is well ventilated and that the cadmium in the air is being monitored. For the rest of us, if your battery explodes in your toy or flashlight, don't touch it. Recycle both the toy and flashlight, don't just throw it away in the trash can. That's how the environment gets contaminated and that's how our food and our water gets heavy metals. And if you live next to industrial plants, you should get HEPA filters in your home to clean out your air to filter those heavy metal particles. If your house is dusty, there's probably cadmium in that dust. That's why it's good to keep it dust free. However, if you are smoking cigarettes or you're just inhaling it from secondhand smoke, you're really inhaling a lot of cadmium, which can cause emphysema or a disease that causes giant holes in your lungs. Now, super high doses of cadmium will cause GI distress. And for children, cadmium can cause developmental delays. So if you're wondering why your kids haven't hit their milestones or performing in school, then you should talk to your pediatrician about having them tested for heavy metals and start by improving their diet. Remove hot chocolate, candy bars, chocolate cake, etc. Once you're exposed to cadmium, you can't get rid of cadmium as it gets stored in your bones and is a direct toxin to your organs like your kidneys, causing renal tubular acidosis and stones. Cadmium pretends to be calcium and can replace calcium in your bones, in your liver, and your kidney, and actually reduce your absorption of calcium from your foods. But cadmium can't replace a role of calcium, which is vital to life. It's like being tricked and getting counterfeit money instead of real money. And you don't find out until you're going to spend it. Now, if your bones are depleted of calcium, that's called osteoporosis. Now, if osteoporosis or kidney failure isn't going to deter you from eating chocolate high in cadmium, then how about cancer? Cadmium is a known carcinogen, increasing lung, prostate, breast, bladder, pancreatic, and kidney cancers. The CDC monitors cadmium in a small fraction of our population and concludes that just about everyone has measurable cadmium levels in their blood. I did, but that doesn't mean we need to worry about having low cadmium levels, nor does that mean we should be collecting more cadmium in our bodies. So we really should avoid high cadmium foods. The European Union actually has rules prohibiting the sale of chocolate that has over one part per million of cadmium and a limit of 0.6 micrograms per gram of cocoa powder. For dark chocolate, 30 to 50% chocolate bars can actually have 0.3 micrograms per gram, but about 50% can actually have significantly higher amount to 0.8 microgram per gram. For milk chocolate, the European Union has a limit of 0.1 micrograms per gram. The United States government doesn't have any rules or even warning labels except for California. Due to Prop 65, any food that is a significant source of cadmium must have a warning label. The most important thing you can do, however, is to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of calcium, iron, zinc, and magnesium and fiber to block cadmium absorption. Now keep in mind that although gram per gram cocoa powder has more cadmium, people usually overeat chocolate bars and not cocoa powder without added sugar like cocoa for baking. The serving size of cocoa powder is five grams, whereas the serving size of chocolate is 40 grams. If you like white chocolate bars, white chocolate has no cocoa solids and should have no heavy metals. However, it is full of saturated fat because of cocoa butter. Now, milk chocolate has very minimum chocolate, less than 30% cocoa solids, and the American milk chocolate actually would not even qualify to be labeled as chocolate in Europe. Thus, milk chocolate would be low in lead and cadmium. However, dark chocolate poses the highest risk. Now, here are some chocolates from Consumer Report with high cadmium levels. 
And here is a list I put together from both Consumer Reports and Consumer Labs. These are both agencies that actually tested these chocolates. Now, if you are interested in dark chocolate bars and want to avoid heavy metals, then stay away from the brands on the table. There is one chocolate with pretty low levels of cadmium at 0.06 micrograms, and that is Montezuma's Dark Chocolate Absolute Black 100% Coca. Now, lead is another dirty pollutant in chocolate. Lead and cadmium are equally poisonous, and the level that we need in our body is zero. Now here is a list of chocolate bars tested by consumer reports with high lead levels. Lead poisoning is a big deal and lead levels built up in the body over months and years. Ask people of Flint, Michigan how scared they are because of lead in their water. Therefore, chocolate is not the only source of lead and in fact, there is a list of lead that are in your home, workplace, and in certain foods and herbs. Children and adults can both have nonspecific symptoms and you really won't know if you are at toxic levels until you get your blood lead levels checked. Now here are some brands that have low lead levels. Now the reason why brands have different heavy metals is because of the soil and processing technique. Cadmium is sucked up by the cacao plant during growth, but lead contaminates chocolate during the fermentation and drying steps after harvesting of the cacao beans. Now first, the cacao bean is clean, roasted, and shelled, and this traps lead from the air, as well as lead that contaminates the materials they are used for processing. This turns into coca nibs. So coca nibs already have both cadmium and lead. Then the coca nibs are refined and ground to a paste and fermented into chocolate liqueur. The paste can be pressed and pulverized to become coca powder or coca butter. Then if you mix the paste with sugar, milk, or various amounts of coca butter and other ingredients, you have yourself a recipe for delicious chocolates. Let's face it, chocolate is addictive because it has caffeine and added sugar. As a toddler, my son got into my dark chocolate stash. He ate the whole box and I thought it was probably okay because there were so few in that small box. That day he was so energetic and he stayed up until 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm sure without the added sugar, he would not have eaten the chocolate as it's really bitter. Now, if it wasn't dark chocolate, he wouldn't have been up all night either. There's about 60 milligrams of caffeine in a serving of dark chocolate compared to 26 milligrams in a cup of tea and 95 milligrams in an average cup of coffee. And to understand why there are different amounts of caffeine, you need to know how they make the four main types of chocolate. White chocolate is made of at least 20% cocoa butter. It has no caffeine and no coca solids and therefore has no beneficial polyphenols, which is what I'm looking for in chocolate. It also doesn't have the heavy metal problems. Now, if you're into longevity and your mitochondria health, then you should consider eating chocolate, but not white chocolate. Just three teaspoons of coca powder a day in older men and women with arterial blood disease improve their walking performance. That is a big deal as people with peripheral arterial disease can be so debilitated that they wake up in the middle of the night with muscle cramps and unable to walk very far at all. Another study showed that 1.5 ounces of a dark chocolate of at least 85% coca improved treadmill walking distance by 11% in people with peripheral arterial disease. Now circulation is dependent upon open arteries, but improvements in their symptoms were more than just improving their blood flow. They actually biopsied calf muscles of those who ate the chocolate and found that their muscles had more mitochondria and that the mitochondria worked better too. Now remember, white chocolate doesn't have any of those benefits. So to me, white chocolate is just a very tasty, smooth candy without really much chocolate flavor or the beneficial effects of the flavanols. Now, milk chocolate contains at least 10% and up to 30% cocoa powder sold in the US. Actually, I don't believe Europeans allow anything less than 30% to be called chocolate. However, in the US, we're so addicted to sugar, we eat anything with added sugar and just pretend it is chocolate. Now, if you're eating chocolate for its polyphenols, then milk chocolate won't be beneficial to eat, but it is much cheaper and sweeter and the preferred chocolate by kids. I used to eat a lot of cheap milk chocolate. My parents would buy Hershey's and Mars candy bars, two of the largest producers of chocolate even today. Now, ruby chocolate is made out of special ruby cacao beans found in Ecuador, Brazil, and the Ivory Coast, and is a designer cacao seed made by a Belgium chocolate company. It is naturally red and pink in color, and it has a taste of red berries. I've never tried it, but that's what I was told. There is less fermentation with ruby chocolate, and so it may retain higher levels of certain polyphenols like epicatechins. 
Now, unique to ruby chocolate are proanthocyanidins of the A type, whereas milk and dark chocolate have more of the B types. If you're looking to help reduce your appetite and lose some weight, then dark chocolate may be helpful if it is super low in cocoa butter, like about 1%. That kind of dark chocolate is definitely more bitter than milk chocolate. And you can break down dark chocolate into semi-sweet chocolate or bittersweet chocolate. Now, it must have at least 35% cacao solids to be labeled as dark chocolate. Coca solids have flavanols. However, when you see percent coca, it may mean a total of cacao solids and cacao butter. Cacao butter doesn't have any polyphenols, and hence you can't rely on 1% cacao to tell you if it's rich in polyphenols. Another dark chocolate benefit is improved gut health because it is a great prebiotic for your gut microbiome. Now, I really didn't know what real chocolate tasted like since I grew up on Hershey's, Nestle's, and Mars candies, which are basically sugar bombs with a hint of chocolate. I used to sell chocolate candy bars in school. Do you know who was my biggest customer? Me. One day, my candy bars weren't sold, and when I went home, I decided to eat one. One became two, and then I couldn't quit. It was so addictive that I finished six candy bars in one sitting. In one aspect, it was a good thing that I binged on cheap chocolate as that really had so little chocolate, it didn't really have much heavy metals or caffeine. But it showed me the power of addiction. And so now when I'm looking for chocolate, I'm looking for low-fat cocoa powder with high flavanols. That's actually the healthiest form of chocolate if you can find ones with low heavy metals. Populations that eat higher amounts of cocoa flavanols have lower cardiovascular disease and improved cholesterol levels. Now, the FDA actually allows supplements with at least 4% flavanol powders to put a health claim on their products. Now, this brand has some of the highest flavanols. Stay away from Dutch processed cocoa powders because they do not have flavanols. Here's a list of cocoa powders and their flavanol content per teaspoon as tested by Consumer Labs in 2022. Now, it seems that the best value for your dollar is a good and gather brand found at Target which falls under the European guidelines of allowable cadmium. Now, cocoa powders have four times as much cadmium than dark chocolate when you compare gram per gram because dark chocolate is actually diluted with cocoa butter and sugar. Now, if you're looking for chocolate chips, here's a list of ones with lower levels of heavy metals from Consumer Reports. Now, I was actually going to buy cacao nibs but they all fail to pass the cadmium test. Now, if you're looking for hot chocolate for your kids, you may want to consider buying the Good & Gather brand of cocoa powder and make hot chocolate yourself, as a lot of these mixes have high levels of lead, which are really bad for kids. Now, if you're looking to reduce your cholesterol, then you should avoid white chocolate and chocolates with higher cocoa butter, which is really 60% saturated fat. And if you want to know why saturated fat is bad for your health, check out the next video.